Hi everyone, Jeff here again for VIP Vision. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to configure a VIP Vision IP network video recorder to record to a micro SD card which is installed inside the camera. Now, in this video, I'm going to be assuming that you've already installed the micro SD card into the IP camera. If you have not done that yet, please go back and check a previous video. We'll link it down below um, as showing you how to actually do the installation of the SD card inside the cameras, how to choose the SD card, choose an SD card which is suitable for installation inside the cameras. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to configure this using the web interface of the camera, okay? There's a couple of other different ways that you could do it. You could use, do it using the config tool, smart PSS. You might even be able to do it using the recorder depending on the version of, a version of recorder that you're planning on connecting it to if you are planning on connecting the, the camera to a recorder. Um, but in this situation, I'm going to show you what I think is the most straightforward way of doing it, which is to use the web interface of the camera in question. Now. For the camera that we're going to be using today, I've got another one plugged in, but on this, in this particular instance, I'm going to assume that you have your camera connected via a power over ethernet switch to your laptop, okay? And that there's nothing else connected. Your laptop and the camera are the only two things that are connected here. Um, that'll just make your life a lot easier with regards to um, setting up the camera for the first time. We're going to be connecting to the camera's default IP address, okay, of 192.168.1.108. I'm going to assume that you've already initialized the camera um, and that you can connect to it, okay, so that you can connect to it from your laptop. You've already got an IP address set on your laptop so that you can connect to the IP camera in that range. If you do not, if you haven't done the initialization on the camera yet, if it's a brand new camera out of the box, please go back and watch the initialization video. Again, we'll link that down below. So now I'm just going to jump across to my laptop here. Okay, so the, our first step as I mentioned, is to uh, open the web interface of the camera. Now, I'm going to suggest, strongly suggest that you do this in Internet Explorer. Please use Internet Explorer. Don't use Chrome, Edge, Firefox, etc. For this particular operation, Internet Explorer is what you're looking for. Okay, so please use Internet Explorer. Now, I'm going to enter the default IP of the camera, which is 192.168.108, as I mentioned previously. Okay, and I'm prompted with the login prompt here. So I'm just going to log in with my pre-configured username and password. Now, remember we did this during the initialization process of the camera, so please go back and watch the initialization video if you have more questions about this. So I'm going to log in with my username and password, and there you go. There is my camera. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do here um, is to configure our SD card for recording. Okay, so what you need to do first up is just click the settings section up the top here. Once you've gone to setting, you need to go to storage, okay, and destination. Now, we've got a few different destinations here. The one that we're going to be looking for is local, okay, so local is what's going to be recorded on the camera itself, what's going to be recorded to the storage on the camera, which in this case is a micro SD card. Now, you will note across here that we say that we've we've got one disk present, uh, its status is normal, it's currently set to read and write, and it has used 0.1 megabytes of 30 gig, okay, so it's a 32 gig micro SD card in here. Now you will see, you will notice that I actually have free space here, okay, it's telling me that I've used 0.1 meg of 30 gig, However, if for some reason your SD card that you've inserted is not formatted correctly or it's been formatted for use in something else, maybe it's running NTFS, it's got some strange uh, file system set up on it, you may need to format the SD card before you use it, okay? So down here you'll see a format option, okay? It will ask you if you want to format and reboot the device. I'm not going to do it for the sake of this video, but if for some reason you do not see your full capacity of your SD card down here, or you just want to clear it for whatever reason, you can use this format option here. So I'm going to select no. Okay, so great, we've got a healthy SD card, everything's working, we know that we've mounted the SD card correctly. If for some reason it just flat out does not appear in here, then please go back and just revisit that, that video showing how to seat the SD card correctly, how to mount the SD card correctly on the camera, because there's a good chance that it's not correctly seated. Just remove the SD card, reinsert it, and you'll probably be fine. Note that if you have, for whatever reason, inserted the SD card while the camera itself is powered up, while you probably haven't damaged the camera, it almost certainly will not be detected at this stage. So you'll need to power cycle the camera, plug it back in, and then you'll see the SD card show up. So 
That's great. So what's the next step that we need to do here? So the next thing we need to do is actually schedule some recordings. Okay, so at the moment we've got a good SD card. Um, we need to tell it what to do now. By default, the camera itself is set to record on motion and alarm, but not full-time recording, okay? So not general recording. What I could do if I wanted to, and what I'll show you here, is I can actually set, um, I can set it so that we have general recording for all days, as well as our motion and alarm recording. So general is our full-time recording, okay? As I mentioned, our full-time recording. So I'm gonna click save, and now we have our green general bars across here, as well as our motion and alarm bars, okay? So now if I click save, straight away we're recording. We're recording to the SD card. If you want to verify that we're actually recording before we go and check playback, I can select destination. And now you can see that we've used a little bit more space, okay? So we've used 7.3 megabytes out of our 30 gig. And if I click refresh, you'll see that that'll be going up. Okay, so we're recording at the moment. If I want to verify that we are actually recording, right, even though I can see that this, this is going up, so I know we are, if I want to verify that we're actually recording, I can go and check playback, and I'll do that now. So to select playback, simply go to the top, up the top here, select playback, select the date. Now, it's worth noting, if for some reason the date and time on your camera are not set correctly, this will not show up here. Um, so we'll just... Just jump back and just verify that our date and time are correct, which they are. Okay, so 2018, 06, 19, and we'll go to playback. Now, make sure that you've got everything selected down the bottom here. Ah, actually, that's one thing that you may need to watch out for. Okay, so you'll see that our, our, our blocks, uh, or our, we're using data slowly here. We actually have a pre, sorry, a pack duration in here. You may find that if for some reason we have not yet had a complete pack duration, you may not may find that you won't actually be able to view anything in playback. Okay, so I can reduce this pack duration to one, just for the sake of this video. But if you don't see anything in playback straight away, but you are seeing data ending up in the destination here, don't worry too much about it. It just basically means that it hasn't hit the end of the packet yet, playback packet. Okay. So now we can see that we've got data on the 19th now, it's highlighted in blue. Okay, and you can just see it down the back here. It's a little green blip. I don't know if you can see it at the bottom of the screen down here, but what I can do is I can just click play and it will play from that section. And you can see that it's playing back and you, I'm not sure if you can actually hear it, but there's actually audio playing there as well. And I'm gonna click stop. Okay, great, so we're recording full time. We've got our general recording running all the time. Note, however, that that is probably not what you wanna do. You probably don't want the camera to be recording all the time, flat out. Um, you will probably go through SD cards pretty quickly if you do this, just because of you, you'll hit right endurance limits on SD cards. Again, go back to the previous video on which SD cards to choose regarding right endurance and things if, if you want to um, get a little bit more information about right endurance, but it's much better, it's a much better idea typically to set the camera to record on motion or on event, okay? So if I'm gonna jump back to our settings section again now, and you'll see that our, our data is still going up here, great, so we've used nearly 100 megabytes out of our 30 gigs. What I'm gonna come back in here though is go to schedule, and I'm gonna select setting, and I'm actually gonna uncheck general, and I'm gonna select all days, and I'm gonna click save. Now this is gonna remove my general, my full-time recording. I'm gonna click save down the bottom. And now, if we go back to destination, you find that if I refresh this, we're no longer saving data. Okay? So, what instead I probably wanna actually do is set up our motion events. Okay, so I'm gonna come into motion now, and I'm gonna set up video detection. I'm gonna enable motion detection I'm gonna make sure that the period is set correctly. Okay, the period's set for all days at all day, for all days. I'm gonna click save. And we'll just increase, we'll just set the area as well. And we'll turn up the sensitivity. Okay, now you'll see that it's actually detecting the clock up here moving, which is what we wanna do.
OK. So now I've actually set the camera to record on motion rather than full time recording. Um, as I mentioned, this is probably what you want to do. It's the best way to do it in the majority of cases. Um, and, and now what you'll notice is that instead of getting the green motion bars down the bottom, we'll actually have all the green bars, the green bar indicating the time period that we're, we're recording. Um, you'll note that you'll start getting the yellow bars, much the same way as you do on the VRP Vision Network video recorders. So I'm going to jump back again now. Just to verify that we are actually recording on motion and that the moving clock is triggering it. Again, I can come back to storage and destination and just click refresh and just verify that indeed we are recording on motion. Come back into playback and you'll see that now we've ticked over to the 20th here and I can click play and I can zoom in. And you'll see that now, now while we had that little blip where we had the section before where we were actually recording at, uh, we were recording full time or general recording, we've also got now our motion or our event recording down here. And there you go. We're triggering on the clock. So in this video, I've shown you how to set up your camera to record to an SD card that's been installed in the camera. We've done it uh, continuous recording or general full-time recording. We've also shown you how to set up the camera to record only on motion, okay? So to, to trigger only on motion windows. And that's, that's typically the better way of doing it. Some other things that you might want to look into, um, maybe adjusting the bit rate that the camera's recording at, um, reduce the bit rate to increase the amount of time that your, your SD card lasts. Um, select which stream possibly that gets recorded to the, the SD card. There's sections in the camera for that as well. You can tell uh, the camera basically what to, what to record to the SD card. Maybe you only want to save the sub stream or the extra stream to the SD card instead of the high quality mainstream to the SD card. Um, there's a number of other things that you can do. You can set it up to save snapshots to the SD card or something like that as well. Um, I hope that this video has been helpful, at least to give you the basics of how to set this up. Uh, we will have future videos showing more in-depth features, how to, how to do certain things on the cameras that um, are probably out of the scope of this video. But yeah, I hope that it's been useful. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please feel free to click the like button below, below. Click subscribe if you find these videos useful in general. If you have any questions, comments, anything regarding this video, any other video, please feel free to leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with any questions. Thanks for watching.